Buzz is beating, was beating last semester, I guess. And he was talking about pseudo NASA weapon classes arising from Penner's construction. <laughs> and now I'm talking about pseudo NASA weapon classes not arising from Penner's construction. So we are working together, but we are complementing each other. We are working with each other. It was interesting. But I will talk about the Penner's construction uh, first, and then I will talk about uh, pseudo-NASA American classes not arising from Penner's construction. So let S be S G M B A orientable surface of genus G with N punctures. The mapping class group of surface set is the group of orientation free driving homeomorphisms. Modulo isotopy. So, uh, we have the famous classification theorem. So an element of the mapping class group, uh, we call them a mapping class. And each mapping class has a representative homeomorphism So, uh, 
one foliation under under this homeomorphism, one foliation is stretched by some number lambda. And another the, the other foliation it, it's contracted by lambda. There are singular points on this foliation, so at near the singular points, the foliation looks like this. Maybe it maps to um, another singular point right there. So uh, this is a pseudo Nassau mapping class, and there is an interesting real number, lambda. Uh, this is so called stretch factor or the location of American class F. Um, at some point, it was not easy to give explicit Susanasa mapping classes. And after Thurston's paper in late 1970s, various construction of Susanasa mapping classes have been developed. Thurston uh, gives us a construction using two multi twist. Are not your codes. Um, they give us the construction using interval changing map. Uh, we'll talk about the panels construction today. It's it's about inter it's a construction in terms of the twist. Their law gives a similar construction to panels construction. Kasson gives um, homological SP and so on. Uh, so today we'll, we'll talk about the pairs construction. Uh, let A and B, the multi curves, A1 through AN, B1 through BN. So a multi curve is a collection of mutually disjoint simple closed curves. And suppose A union B fills the surface S. So that means um, its complement topologically union of disks or once constructed disks. Sorry, in what order are they in? Uh, Sorry? Matter. 
Any order? Any order. Any order. Any order. Any order. Well, well, then what's the point of, of uh, having them in two different classes? You're doing twists and inverse twists in the two different classes. Twists oh, and yeah, yeah. inverse twists. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, then uh, F is a uh, pseudo mass automating class. Uh, any product, any order. So, so quick example. Let's say take a surface of genus a closed closed surface of genus two. Uh, I'll choose I don't know these curves. Vertex, you mean point of intersection? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Vertex, I mean the mm -hmm. intersection point, mm -hmm. right? So uh, I'll draw a quick example. And what's a train track? It's a smooth one sub manifold embedded, embedded in the surface. So I don't know. Uh, let's, let's consider a simplest case. So I'll choose. A1, A2, A3, B2. So at each, ver at each intersection point, um, I'll make it smooth so that there is one tangent. So, a1 and B2 goes like that way and exit that way so that it makes a smooth tangent line, unique tangent line at that point. So here, A2, this curve is also intersecting A2, so again, make it smooth like that. So B2, we can draw similarly. This way, so this smoothly embedded one sub manifold is so called the train track. And um, we can assign weights on each edge, on each branch, and we, we require that it satisfies the switch condition, which means uh, weight, uh, weight, the sum of the weights on the incoming edges. 
is equal to the sum of the weights on outgoing edges. So that, that's the switch condition. So let's say 3, 4, and it should be 5, 2, for instance. Then, um, on this explicit train track, the spanner pseudo-nasal mapping class is acting on this train track, and this action actually preserves it, right? Yes. It, it is preserved by spanner pseudo-nasal mapping class. The action can be written as positive integer matrix. Then, by the prone Frilovinius theorem, it has a largest real root in magnitude. We call that parent Frilovinius eigenvalue. Uh, that becomes the stretch factor of this pseudo mapping class. A explicit pseudo nasal mapping classes using the Penner's construction. Um, and, and the ways that you use there, they're determined by F, by, the, by, the, by this word, right? Say that again, please. Mm. Uh, so the ways that you assign there, they're determined by, by, by the yeah. mapping class directly, right? Well, he's just, so you have the space of all weights, and the, the action on the space of weights yes. is the matrix. ways to see this, maybe one way to see it is uh, in this construction, Panner pseudo nasal doesn't permit the singular points. So uh, actually there are pseudo nasal maps permitting the singular points. That's one way to see this. Uh, maybe another way, uh, Panner showed that uh, as genus is increasing, the smallest 
stress factor goes to one, converges to one. But uh, Chris showed that actually uh, smallest stress factor from Penrose construction is bounded above by some number, square root of five, I guess. Four. Okay. About the below, sorry, about the below. So it doesn't give us the smallest stretch factors to the Hassel map. That's another way to see this. Uh, but I think that Penner maybe thought this is the only one obstruction. So he conjectured that um, by taking power, then <coughs> we'll get a map uh, maps each singular point to itself. So even pseudo mass of f, some power comes from this construction. It has been known to be true for some basic surfaces, for instance, um, it has been known to be true for torus, one punctured torus, fourth punctured sphere. Uh, but other surfaces, it has been open. We don't know if that's true or not. And our main theorem answers this question. So uh, I'm studying the properties of stretch factors, so let's say let lambda be um, stretch factor from Penner's, uh, from Penner's construction. Then, um, there is a property that is shared with all pseudo NASA from Penner's construction. Uh, gamma conjugate of lambda, so that is the roots of the minimal polynomial of lambda, they all lie off the unit circle. So in particular, using this property, we will show uh, the Penrose conjecture is true for only these three cases. Okay, 
Okay, so part one. defined by uh, the geometric intersection number of the curve EJ and EK. So then it looks like a um, block, block matrix. So it is a square matrix, right? N plus M, by N plus M matrix, right? N plus M matrix, yes. N plus M times N plus M matrix, that's right. Uh -huh. So then, um, it looks like this, it's a block diagonal matrix. Diagonal matrices are zero, because um, well, AI, in, in this order, A, AJ and AK, they do not intersect, it's a multi-curve. So intersection number is zero. And this is gonna be another linear matrix, intersection number whose entries are intersection number with AJ and BK. It's gonna be a symmetric matrix, because intersection number BJ AK is equal to intersection number A K B J. So it's a integer matrix, symmetric, diagonal entries are zero. <coughs> Then um, <clears throat> let's consider a uh, uh, positive twist about AJ and negative twist about BK. The action of the main twist on a train track can be written as, again, a simple positive integer matrix. Say action of the twist can be written as uh, so identity plus Di, let me talk about what Di is, times um, the intersection matrix. Di is just the matrix i diagonal identity, uh, I mean i diagonal entry is 1 and others are 0. So what it looks like, so uh, let, let's consider a, some concrete example. So if I take the 
previous curves. And well, you know, using this simple picture, intersection matrix is a um, diagonal diagonal matrix. Diagonal matrix is R zero. So and one and two, one and two, and one and two, and one and two, and upper right side. That's gonna be the intersection between A I and B J. So intersection number A one B one is one, A1, A2, B1, B2. So intersection number A1, A2, A1, B1 is 1, A1, B2 is 0. Intersection number A2 is B1 is 1, A2, B2 is 1. And it's going to be symmetric. So 1, 0, 1, 1. And what's the action of, say, say consider Action of gain twist about A2 on the train track. You know, on the train track, what I mean by that is just smoothing uh, each intersection point that we talked about in the kind of construction. Then gain twist about A2, then each curve intersecting A2 that wraps around A2, the weights on intersection intersecting curve, they contribute the weight into the way on A2. So this action can be written as, I don't know, if I, if I consider weights x, y, z, w, the action of the thing twist can be written as x is x and y. So the increase about A2, then B1 wraps A2. So this weight Z is going to be contributes to the weight of A2. So A2 is going to be Y plus Z. And B2 is also intersecting A2, so this weight contributes to weight on A2 as well. So which means uh, we can write down the explicit energy matrix. Should be it's almost identity. So there is a non-zero second row, so x, y, z, w, so one one, which is the intersection number. So we, so action of the main twist is almost identity, and we take the i row from the intersection matrix, and. We can write that in this way, identity plus i row of the intersection matrix, the so i row of the intersection numbers. So that, that's what I mean by that. So, uh, uh, what is the i in this example? Uh, uh, the i is, in this example, what is that? 1, and everything is 0. Every, everything is 0. 1 on the second diagonal chain, and everything is 0. So that, that gives us the i row of the intersection matrix on mega. So action of each chain twist can be written as this simple integer matrix. So uh, any pseudo out from Panner's construction. Uh, is the product of positive twist about AIs, negative twist about BJs, so its action on train track can be written as the product of Corresponding matrices. And then the stretch 
factor of this pseudo-somatic class is going to be the Proof-Rubinius eigenvalue of the product of matrices QI. So to study the stretch factors from uh, Penner's construction, it's enough to study the semi-group generated by these simple integer matrices. So study. The semi-group, that's called gamma omega, generated by uh, these matrices QI representation of the then twist. And we define a real value function called um, height function. Geometrically, what it means uh, if V is a weight on the train track, then H of V uh, gives us the summation of uh, product of weights on over all intersection points. Summation of the product of weights of intersection, intersecting curves at all um, intersection points. So, for example, uh, if I assign weights here, maybe one, two. Two, three. So we're considering this weight one, two, two, three. And we want it to be on B2, then H of B gives us some of the probable weights at its, at its intersection point. At that point, A1, A2, they are intersecting, they have the weight one and two. Another intersection point, uh, B1, A2, they're product of their weights, and the last intersection point, uh, A2 and B2, uh, the product of their, uh, their weights. That, that's what we have if we compute the high function assign, assign, using the assigned uh, weight. And this high function satisfies a very interesting property. Uh, it's going to be a non-decreasing function uh, under the action of the semi-group gamma omega under the action of QI, under the action of the Dane twist. So proposition. More precisely, the difference of values between V and QIB is gonna be, we can compute that directly. Uh, it's a difference between QIV and V is known square. Um, just let me just sketch the proof. It's, it's just easy algebra. So just do use the definition. Um, it's going to be uh, by definition one half. What's that? V transpose, two I transpose, omega. 
QI V minus one half V QI V set of codes. So we can vector it out. Plus I draw of the intersection matrix. So plug in that directly and compute it. Then it becomes a simpler form. Omega times di times omega. Um, and use so used to cancel out. That's one region we put the one half right there just for simplicity. So scalar doesn't really matter. But and using this form. And use the fact that uh, Q, oh, sorry, omega is symmetric, and di squared is just di. Using these two facts, uh, we can conclude that that becomes the uh, length of. The difference between these two uh, factors. It's not hard to see that, so just believe me. So if you believe me, uh, then we have we have a direct consequence of that. For any matrix in the semi-group, the product of the QIs, the value of H is going to be non decreasing function. Right? Multiply by QI, then uh, the difference between the values of H is some length squared, so that's greater than zero, which means uh, the product of M is a product of mm. such matrices, the value is keep rising. It, it never goes down. It's a non decreasing function. And this is the equality holds if the two vectors are the same. Because uh, if the two vectors are different, it's going to be great, strictly greater than zero. So <coughs> we have the equality only when, if and only if the two, two vectors are the same. And then, now we can, we can conclude, we can make our first conclusion. If a matrix M is coming from the semi-group generated by QIs, <coughs> then uh, that cannot have an eigenvalue on the unit circle. So then, um, um, you know, M V is not V, obvious, obviously, because we, we assume the eigenvalue is not one. Uh, but it's a so it's a unimodular eigenvalue. So under the iteration, so it's rotating um, on on a complex plane. So there you could just a sequence of positive integers. Such that uh, such that 
under the iteration uh, that converges to the original vector v. So then, um, by the continuity, the value of such sequence converges to value of a, value of v, but um, and v is not v, which means our height function height function is increasing, so that's going to be strictly greater than h of v. So under the iteration. That's also greater than the value of h. So that's a contradiction. So um, we 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 have a property shared with all pseudo-Nassau mapping classes from uh, the Penrose construction. The, the, now the question is: Is there a pseudo-Nassau mapping class whose stretch vector? Uh, just a second. I'm confused about the logic. Uh, so in the function h, the argument. Uh, it was a couple of real numbers or complex numbers? Which one? Uh, for the function h. h was a function from where to where? Real numbers. Uh, real real number? So, so uh, I'm just confused. So this eigenvector doesn't have to have real coordinates, does it? Uh, in this argument. So what happened? Uh, yeah. I, I don't quite understand, you know. Maybe this the K of V is, is really being rotated and, and there's a there's a two dimensional real plane invariant associated to the eigen. But the eigenvalues they all there's also the complex conjugate of V. Yeah, uh, oh, okay. So, so there's some refinement of the eigenvalues. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, yes. Fine. So we're we're function. Yes. yes. Okay. Um so uh So this is saying that uh, all stretch factor from Penrose construction has the property that gamma conjugates all line of the unit circle. And there is actually such stretch factors with gamma conjugate on the unit circle on each surfaces, ex except without the exceptional surfaces. So, but, mm -hmm. but is the property that you uh, uh, have a gamma conjugate on a, a, a unit circle is that going to be preserved uh, by the Hagen power? That's right. That's right. Uh, that's, that's the idea. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, uh, if lambda ends up gamma conjugate on the unit circle, then every power has a gamma conjugate on the unit circle. So, if we have a such stretch factor, then any power doesn't come from the Penrose construction. So actually, there are. So let me just finish with this argument. Uh, S2G, uh, I mean, the closed surface of genus 2, uh, there is a mapping class whose stretch factor is the largest to of this polynomial. And it is a famous one. It's um, the smallest stretch factor on a closed surface of genus two. And it's a it's a actually the conjugates are on the unit circle, unfortunately. So it doesn't come from the Penrose construction. So any because any power has a viral conjugate on the unit circle. And there's a covering map uh, from SG to S2 and uh, so the mapping class can lift, some power can lift to the cover. So uh, we are taking power, but doesn't matter. The stretch factor, again, has have a conjugate on the unit circle. So there, there are some mapping classes not from the Penrose construction on each G. And given a surface, Pseudo-Nassau map uh, for some power b to k b to the k has a fixed point. So 
deleting this fixed coin gives us the pseudo-Nasa homeomorphism uh, with one additional functor that induces the map surface minus point to surface minus point. So puncturing one additional point, uh, uh, we have a pseudo-Nasa mapping class with some power of that as with stretch factor lambda to k. Again, this lambda to k again has a property that gamma conjugate on the unit circle. So doing puncturing, so uh, there are pseudo-Nasa mapping classes on all GN. Uh, G is greater than G of 2, and non negative punctures. So the only what's the remaining? Um, I guess the remaining is 0 0.5, 1, 2. And, um, oops, sorry about that. Again, okay, there's a pseudo Nassau mapping class on. S0, 5. Uh, and using this example, um, by puncturing again, um, there are pseudo mapping classes not coming from the Penner's construction with functors n equals greater than 5. And the last case, I guess, is S12. Um, and there is a hyperbolic involution. And that gives us a covering map onto a sphere with five punctures. So, still as of with some power leads to the uh, cover. So S12, it also has a pseudo-NASA mapping class not from the Penance construction. So they cover all the all things. So the exceptional surfaces are just the, the three surfaces, torus, one function, and torus, four times function of speed. So yeah, I'll, I'll stop here. Thanks for your attention. Are there any other questions? Sorry. Uh, if you take one of these Penner examples and you try to represent it with a, as a train track map, then what can you say about the train track that would be different from this kind of? Um, I do not know. <laughs> well, because I, I don't know if they have some pattern or not. I don't think so. I don't think we have a nice pattern for the Sudonasa mapping classes, not from the Penner's construction. It's, it's complicated. So, uh, this statement above that uh, uh, having a, a gala conjugate on the unit circle that, it's preserved, that this property is preserved by taking powers, is it easy to see why this is true? Is, is this what, I mean, why is this true? Is it an obvious fact? You know, oh, or uh, what reason? You know? huh? I don't know. So, I don't know if there is an obvi obvious reason for that. I'm not sure. But it is an algebraic fact. Yes, so actually, I did computer experiments. So I, I'm not a computer expert, but I do enjoy computer experiments. I do some other projects. And, you know, Penner's construction, we can easily generate a lot of pseudo mapping classes. I use the Penner's construction to generate a lot of pseudo mapping classes. And I realized that they have this property. And that, that's how we start, started to work on this project. And actually, yeah, we got it. We, we show it, it is true for all to ourselves from Penner's construction. So that's how we get the answer. But, but that, that's great. That's a good point. But we don't know if there is an obvious reason for this property. Anything else? Just like